We continue now with our look into the murder of Kitty Genovese. As has already been mentioned, a week after the murder, the New York Times reported that, quote, for more than half an hour, 38 respectable law-abiding citizens in Queens watched a killer stalk and stab a woman in three separate attacks, unquote. The New York Times itself has now called that report erroneous, but more than 50 years later, the rape and murder continues to be discussed and studied precisely because most of us continue to believe that dozens of people fail to come to her aid. Fordham University professor Harold Takushian is an authority on the Kitty Genovese case and has conducted several experiments to further explore what has come to be known as the bystander effect or the Kitty Genovese syndrome. Professor Takushian joins me now. Professor, welcome. Thank you. So, Professor, first of all, what is fact and what is fiction about what happened to Kitty Genovese 52 years ago? We had a conference in uh, Fordham University in 2014 on the 50th anniversary, and this was a thorny issue. I wouldn't say that the initial reporting was erroneous. I would say it was exaggerated. It was erroneous in the sense that it wasn't exact. Uh, it was two attacks rather than three. Uh, there may not have been 38 witnesses. But that's not erroneous because this poor woman screamed for her life and people saw it and they didn't intervene. And that's the reality of the situation. So what Abe Rosenthal wrote was wrong in the details, but correct in the substance. So talk about what is called the bystander effect or the Kitty Genovese uh, syndrome. What is it? Briefly, uh, Rosenthal, the journalist, was the one that challenged us behavioral scientists. And he said, why didn't people help her? And we realize that we don't know why people do help each other. In fact, the 1964 incident has created a new area of psychology called pro-social behavior that simply didn't exist before that. We did not know why people help each other. And now, fortunately, we do. We do understand it much better. And your experiments that you've conducted, what exactly are they? What are those experiments specifically? And what have you found as a result of them? Well, several of us have done research. Uh, my particular experiments are what we call field experiments. In fact, right around here in the PBS studio, <laughs> mm. uh, where we pretend to commit crimes in public and observe how people react. And unfortunately, we find that in urban environments, people either don't notice us or they don't care. For whatever reason, the rate of intervention is very low. Mm -hmm. So the bystander effect is the tendency of people in large groups to not react during a crisis. Uh, so, so if something like what happened to Kitty Genovese would happen today, on the second decade of the 21st century, in, in similar circumstances, what, what do you say would happen? Would, would, would it happen the same way? Yes. Really? That's what your, that's what your experiments show? Oh, absolutely. 9-11 uh, has had an effect. People are more helpful in the past 15 years after 9-11. That has really had a, an, in, uh, an impact. But the fact is, Rosenthal opened our eyes to a phenomenon that we did not see before. Every day, people are victimized in public. After 1964, the term, I did not want to get involved, became taboo. Mm -hmm. uh, that no question the Genovese case had an impact. But uh, unfortunately, one factor is ambiguity. In the Genovese case, it wasn't clear if she was drunk or a husband and wife fight. So that you're correct that if it's clear, if there's an, a stabbing going on, it makes a big difference. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, many of these incidents are in low, um, difficult situations where it's not clear what's happening. And people are still writing about it? All these books are about Kitty Genovese? That is one thing that makes it unique, mm -hmm. is that for 49 years, we knew only the last 28 minutes of her life. There was not a single biography of the first 28 years. Mm -hmm. And it is just, no, none of us can explain it. There are mm -hmm. about 25 of us who mm -hmm. meet to discuss the Genovese incident, mm -hmm. and um, there's just nothing like it. Why there was no biography for 49 years, it's, it can't be explained. You know, the murderer, the person who perpetrated this crime on Kitty Genovese, just recently died. Did you ever have a chance to speak to him, or did anyone interview him about what he thought of the crime and what he thought about the fact that no one came to Kitty's help? Uh, like William Genovese, several of us uh, initially had no interest in learning more about him. <laughs> in fact, I tried not to mention his name. Uh, but the fact is, uh, when Albert Steedman interviewed the killer, he asked, How, why weren't you scared? And the killer said, I knew they wouldn't do anything people never do. 
Wow. Which is chilling that a sociopath knows human nature that well, even more than, than us psychologists do. Well, Professor, it's a, it's a fascinating study, and it's a sad study if what you suggest is true, that perhaps many of us would do the same thing today. Yes, and fortunately, shows like this one uh, discourage that and open people's eyes. All right, Professor. Well, thank you so much for joining us today.